So welcome to Unit 12, Abnormal Behavior, Module 69, which is Other Disorders. And these slides align with Meyer Psychology for the AP Course, third edition. There are four learning targets for this module. They are to describe somatic symptom and related disorders. Sorry, I'm having an issue with my mouse. Um, describe dissociative disorders and explain why they are controversial. Identify the three clusters of personality disorders and explain what behaviors and brain activity characterize one of them called antisocial personality. Identify the three main eating disorders and examine how biological, psychological, and sociocultural influences make people more vulnerable to them. So what is a somatic symptom disorder? It's a psychological disorder in which the symptoms take a somatic, bodily form without apparent physical cause. This used to be called somatoform disorder, but is now, now called somatic symptom disorder. One person may have a variety of complaints, vomiting, dizziness, blurred vision, difficulty in swallowing. Another may, have, may experience severe and prolonged pain. So a conversion disorder is a disorder in which a person experiences a very specific physical symptom that is not compatible with recognized medical or neurological condition, um, also called functional neurological symptom disorder. That's quite a mouthful. A patient with a conversion disorder might, for example, lose sensation in a way that makes no neurological sense. Other conversion disorder symptoms might be unexplained paralysis, blindness, or an inability to swallow. Illness anxiety disorder, um, is one in which a person interprets normal physical sensations as symptoms of a disease, right? This used to be called and is commonly called in everyday life hypochondriasis. Like, are you a hypochondriac? You think that you have all kinds of physical illnesses because you have anxiety about them. In this relatively common disorder, people interpret normal sensations like a stomach cramp today, a headache tomorrow, as symptoms of some sort of really dreaded disease. Sympathy, sympathy or temporary relief from everyday demands may actually reinforce complaints. Dissociative disorders are controversial, rare disorders in which conscious awareness becomes separated or dissociated from previous memories, thoughts, and feelings. This used to be what people thought of as multiple personality disorder, and some people still think that it's called that, but it's not. Uh, the result may be a fuge state not knowing who you are, perhaps accompanied by travel or relocation to a new place, a sudden loss of memory or change in identity, often in response to an overwhelming stress situation. Um, dissociative identity disorder is a rare, thought to be a rare disorder in which a person exhibits two or more distinct and alternating personalities. Like I said, um, used to be called multiple personality disorder. The disease is characterized by two or more distinct identities, each with its own voice and mannerisms. Um, and it seemed to control a person's behavior at different times. Thus, the person may be sort of prim and proper one moment and then very loud and flirtatious the next. Typically, the original personality denies any awareness of the others. So psychologist Nicholas Spanos asked college students to pretend they were accused murderers being examined by a psychiatrist. Under hypnosis, most spontaneously expressed a second personality. So perhaps dissociative identities are simply a more extreme version of the varied selves we normally present, as when we display a goofy loud self when hanging out with friends or family, some family members and more subdue, subdued, respectful self like around older grandparents. So skeptics also find it suspicious that the disorder has such a short and localized history. Beginning in 19, between 1930 into about 1960, the number of North American um, dissociative identity disorder diagnoses is averaged about two per decade. But then in the 1980s, when the American Psychiatric Association's DSM contained the first formal code for the disorder, the number exploded to more than 20,000. You can see how this kind of made people wonder if this was a real disorder or if the prevalence was way out of line with what the actual disorder is. So Sybil is a famous case of dissociative identity disorder. Shirley Mason was a psychiatric patient diagnosed with that dissociative identity disorder. Her life formed the basis of the best-selling book, Sybil, and of two movies. 
Some argue that the book and movies, popu the popularity of the two of those, fueled the dramatic rise in the diagnosis of cases, and skeptics wonder whether Mason even actually had the disorder. So Joanne Woodward won an Academy Award for her 1958 portrayal of Chris Sizemore, a woman diagnosed with uh, dissociative identity disorder in the movie, The Three Faces of Eve. So what about research on dissociative identity disorder? Well, researchers cite findings of distinct body and brain states associated with differing personalities. Abnormal brain anatomy and activity can also accompany dissociative identity disorder. Brain scans show shrinkage in areas that aid memory and detection of threat. Heightened activity appears in brain areas associated with the control and inhibition of traumatic memories. So both the psychodynamic and learning perspectives have interpreted dissociative identity symptoms as a way of coping with anxiety. Some psychodynamic theorists Theorists see the symptoms as defenses against the anxiety caused by the eruption of unacceptable impulses. In this view, a second personality enables the discharge of those forbidden impulses, those ones buried deep within. Learning theorists see it as be the behaviors being reinforced by anxiety reduction. So now we're going to shift gears a bit. What are personality disorders? They're inflexible and, and enduring behavior patterns that impair social functioning. The inflexible endur and enduring behavior patterns of personality disorders interfere with social functioning. The 10 disorders in DSM-5 tend to form three clusters characterized by anxiety, eccentric behavior, or dramatic and impulsive behavior. So what do we mean by that? Well, anxiety, the, the ones categorized in the anxiety um, box, so to speak. Um, with those, they have fear, individuals have fearful sensitivity to rejection that predisposes them to withdrawal um, and avoidant personality disorder. So the eccentric or odd personality disorder, such as emotion, that individuals exo exhibit emotionless disengagement, such as schizotypal personality disorder. And then the dramatic or impulsive ones, such as the attention getting borderline personality disorder, the self focused narcissistic personality disorder, the callous and often dangerous antisocial personality disorder, which we're going to discuss more right here. So, what is antisocial personality disorder? You might think it means people that aren't social, but that, that's kind of an interesting term that they chose because that isn't what it means. A per, it's a personality disorder in which a person usually a man, exhibits a lack of conscience for wrongdoing, even toward friends and family members. Maybe the person may be aggressive and ruthless or a clever con, art con artist. People with antisocial personality disorder can display symptoms by age eight. Their lack of conscience becomes plain before age 15 as they begin to lie, steal, fight, or display unrestrained sexual behavior. So is there a correlation between emotional intelligence and antisocial personality disorder? So people with antisocial personality disorder sometimes are called sociopaths or psychopaths. Those are not official psychological terms though. They may show lower emotional intelligence, which is the ability to understand, manage, and perceive emotions. So Dennis Rader was known as the BTK killer in Kansas and he was convicted in 2005 of killing 10 people over a 30-year span. Radar, ex Radar sorry, exhibited the extreme lack of conscience that marks antisocial personality disorder. Despite their remorseless and sometimes criminal behavior, criminality is not an essential component of antisocial behavior. Many criminals do not fit the description of antisocial person personality disorder. They're not impulsive and they care for their friends and family. So just because someone's a criminal does not mean they have this disorder. And um, that's just something that's important to remember. So in both, let me go back here. In, in both stressful and non-stressful situations, those who would later be convicted of a crime as 18 to 26 year olds showed relatively low arousal. So this is in turn, this is in regards to a study that was done to figure out if there were differences. Um, what were differences between individuals with um, antisocial personality and those with not? And it's really interesting that they display relatively lower levels of arousal um, to sort of stressful situations. So 
The genetic vulnerability of people with antisocial and unemotional tendencies appears as low arousal in response to threats. Awaiting aversive events such as electric shocks or loud noises, they show little autonomic nervous system arousal. Other studies have found that preschool boys who later become aggressive or antisocial adolescents tend to be impulsive, uninhibited, unconcerned with social rewards, and low in anxiety. So researchers have also found that redu where there's reduced activation in murderers' frontal lobes. The brain area shown at the right helps break impulsive, aggressive behavior. Now shifting gears again to anore anorexia nervosa, which is a feeding and eating disorder in which a person, usually an adolescent female, maintains a starvation diet despite being significantly underweight, sometimes accompanied by excessive exercise. Anorexia nervosa typically begins as a weight loss diet. People with anorexia drop significantly below normal weight, yet they feel fat. Fear being fat, diet obsessively, and sometimes exercise excessively. About half of those who with anorexia display a sort of binge and purge depression cycle. So these twins, Maria and Katie Campbell, have anorexia nervosa. As children, they competed to see who would be thinner. Now, says Maria, her anorexia nervosa is like a ball and chain around my ankle and I can't throw it off. Very sad. So women who view real and doctored images of unnaturally thin models and celebrities often feel ashamed, depressed, and dissatisfied with their own bodies, the very attitudes that predispose eating disorders. Now, bulimia nervosa is a feeding and eating disorder in which a person's binge eating, usually of high caloric foods, is followed by inappropriate weight loss promoting behavior, such as vomiting, laxative, laxative use, fasting, or excessive exercise. Bulimia, unlike anorexia, is marked by weight fluctuations within or above normal ranges, making the condition much easier to hide because it's not as visible. Bulimia may also be triggered by a weight loss diet broken by gorging on forbidden foods. Uh, binge eating disorder is a feeding and eating disorder characterized by a significant binge eating episodes followed by distress, disgust, or guilt, but without the compensatory behavior, the purging or fasting or excessive exercise that you have in bulimia. A US NIMH funded study reported that at some point during their lifetime, 0.6% of Americans met the criteria for anorexia, 1% for bulimia, and 2.8% for binge eating disorder. So researchers tested whether modeling of thinness impacted anorexia by giving some adolescent girls, but not others, a 15 month subscription to American teen fashion magazine. Compared with those who had not received the magazine, vulnerable girls, defined as those who are already dissatisfied, idealizing thinness and lacking social support, exhibited increased body dissatisfaction and eating disorder tendencies. Okay, so back to the learning target review. Somatic symptom disorder presents a somatic symptom, a bodily symptom, a physiological, unexplained, but genuinely felt ailment. In the very closely related conversion disorder, Anxiety appears converted to a physical symptom that has no reasonable neurological or medical basis. The more common illness anxiety disorder, um, formerly known as hypochondriasis, uh, involves the interpretation of normal sensations as a dreaded disorder. So, oops, went backwards, sorry about that. Oh, backwards a lot, okay. Dissociative disorders are conditions in which conscious awareness seems to become separated from previous memories, thoughts, and feelings. Skeptics note that dissociative identity disorder, formerly known as multiple personality disorder, increased dramatically in the late 20th century, that it is rarely found outside of North America, and that it may reflect role-playing by people who are vulnerable to therapist suggestions. Other view this others view this disorder as a manifestation of feelings of anxiety, or as a response learned when behaviors are reinforced by anxiety reduction. So personality disorders are disruptive, inflexible, and enduring behavior patterns that impair social functioning. These disorders form clusters based on three main characteristics, anxiety, sort of eccentricity, um, or odd behaviors, dramatic or impulsive behaviors. 
the one that we mentioned quite a bit was antisocial personality disorder, which is characterized by a lack of conscience and sometimes by aggressive and fearless behavior. Within these individuals, sometimes the amygdala is smaller and the frontal lobes less active in people with this disorder, leading to impaired frontal lobe cognitive function and decreased responsiveness to other people's distress. Genetic predispositions may interact with the environment, like with most of the disorders, to produce these characteristics. So anorexia, bulimia, and binge eating are the three main eating disorders. Despite being significantly underweight, people with anorexia, who are usually adolescent females, continue to diet because they view themselves as fat. Those with bulimia, usually females in their late teens and 20s, secretly binge and then compensate by purging, fasting, or excessively exercising. Unlike anorexia, bulimia is marked by weight fluctuations within or above normal ranges. Those with binge eating tendon disorder binge, but do not follow binging with purging, fasting, or exercising. Um, low self-esteem, perfectionism, concern with other people's perceptions, and cultural pressure, which include body ideals that vary across time and place and are often perpetuated through the media, interact with stressful life experiences and genetics to see to produce eating disorders. And that is the last slide. Thank you for listening. Take care.